what is up guys back with another video in this video i'm going to be discussing everything about eo loadouts um play style um who you want to pair team comps etc um with eo uh, i've legit played eo i don't know like non-stop she was released on wednesday it's saturday now i've legit played her like non-stop for almost three days um gonna go over it if you guys are hyped for this and you guys want more videos like this please leave a like and subscribe because i'm gonna be going over a lot in this video um it, you can also just tab out as well there's not going to be too much on screen that you guys can really see until we get to the loadout section um so eo uh or io uh new support champion i legit got uh, io to level 30 now granted it, it was because we, there actually is a double exp weekend going on but i think out of all the new champions that we actually got, I think Io is actually the first champion that I've legit got to level 30 in three days out of all the champions in the game. Um, she's the only one, even Maeve, and I played the shit out of Maeve when I got her, um, when I first started beginning. Um, now this is going to be mainly for console, because I play on console, so I'm going to be talking in a console-like type preference, mainly for everything that I kind of talk about for Io, um, as a healer, etc., um, gonna go over the talents real quick. Goddess Blessing, allies being healed, gain 25 DR, um, 25% DR. Great talent. Um, I think it's more of a niche talent. It's probably gonna be your second choice of talent if you have, like, another type of healer on your team. If you're gonna be wanna, if you're gonna wanna be, like, a main type healer, Goddess Blessing is not your choice. Um, Lifelink, probably your best talent, um, that you're gonna be using pretty much almost every game. Luna now heals, a, heals allies around her for 300 health per second. Her best talent by far, you're going to be choosing this like 99% of your games. Um, if you're going to be playing it like a solo main healer. Sacrifice, absolutely useless talent. If Eo falls below 200 health while Luna is active, she trades places with Luna, heals, and Luna dies instead of in her place. Absolutely useless talent. It has It's too high of an internal cooldown. Um, sacrifice, you're never going to be using it. Um, granted, does, Eo does, Io does de decent damage. But you're not going to be using this. It has too high of an internal cooldown to even be usable. Um, if they want to rework it, they need to lower the internal cooldown to like about 20 seconds for it to at least be semi-viable. Either that or just completely rework it. I think if they want to rework it, they can give her some type of talent to where um, you can give her like a, like Janos' old heal. Give her like 3% um, extra, or extra healing boost on her initial cast of her healing ability. Do something like that, or I don't know if they want to re completely rework the talent, but otherwise, it's absolutely useless. Um, unfortunately, she only has like two viable talents, in my opinion. Um, we're gonna be testing out lifelink for this one. Um, I got some loadouts, I'm not gonna cover the loadouts like right now because I'm gonna do that towards the end of the video. Um, basic stuff, um, her main weapon, Lightful, does 400 damage. This is probably one of the best... I'm, I'm going to say she, she probably has the, one of the best weapons out of all the healers in the game. I'm going to say aside from Furia. I think Furia still does more damage than her just because she can do damage and heal at the same time. Um, Eo can't do... Io can't do that. Um, I keep saying Eo. I'm not just going to say whatever. Which one? I don't think it really matters. But um, say I'm healing like this, I can't fire and heal at the same time. Furia, at least she can do that. She can throw out a heal, and then she can get off some decent damage, and then throw out throw out her beam and stuff like that. So, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Eo has probably the second best damage in the game out of all the supports, apart from Furia. Um, her healing, it's a, a hit scan heal similar to Maldamba. Um, on console, I'm gonna say on console, playing her up to like 30 levels. Um, it actually is probably the easiest hit scan to hit to land. I'm gonna say male Damba isn't is a lot more difficult to play. It's actually pretty damn easy to land, and it, it, you can drag it as well. So you can go over here, you can still get a heal, and people if are still moving, you can still you can just hold down the button and hopefully hit them, and it'll actually drag on to other people as well. So she has a for a hit scan, she has a really good easy healing ability for, at least for console. And I'm assuming it's a lot better on PC as well. Um, Moonlight is her healing ability. Guardian Spirit um, summons Luna. Now, if you're using um, 
Her talent where Luna heals 300 health uh, per second. She has a aura around her where you can move her pretty much wherever you want and you're going to be able to help heal health. Um, this is going to probably be her main... It's 90% 90 of the time you're going to be using this ability or her talent. Um, she also does decent damage. Uh, she actually... You can mark... Um, if she's in range, you can mark somebody and then they'll actually go after them. I actually don't know why it's doing it, not doing it right here. We're just we're gonna go over here and try it. Pretty much what you can do is actually mark. You can mark somebody and then she'll actually give a one second stun. So right here, now she's now this victor's marked. One second stun and then it consistently does 180 damage. Now it may not seem like much, but 180 damage consistently taking on somebody is a, a lot of damage, especially if you. If you're going to have Luna around your team healing them for like a double tank comp or something like that. It may not seem like much, but all the chip damage that she does, it actually really does matter. Uh, and that one second stun. If you're always getting flanked, just summon Luna close to you and you can just mark them. And the one second stun most of the time will win you a 1v1 versus a flank. Um, she has more of like the better, out of like most of the healers, she has the better type of mobility and way to escape flank, flanks in my opinion um as for her movement ability i'm gonna say it's probably one of the best movement abilities in the game for the healers i say she has the best movement ability out of the all the healers um which is actually a pretty much a um a leap backwards now this also has cards you can actually throw into your deck into your loadout that can actually augment it to be a little bit less gravity stuff like that cooldown reduction but out of all the healers, she has the best movement ability by far. So much utility. Um, and as for the... Uh, move her down here, because I really don't want to deal with her. As for the alt, um, it's... Pretty much, it's kind of like a, a Torvald beam. But instead, it, can, you, it carries people um, all the way back. And if it hits a wall, it does 800 damage. Um, it depends on what also like what type of ground you're standing on so if you're standing on like a low ground like right here or if i'm uh, like up here it's gonna go up here and then it's gonna go a little bit higher and then you can possibly carry people off the map over type over walls or over like small obstacles it depends on what kind of ground you're on if you're on high ground you're gonna have a little bit easier time to knock people off the map um so it's kind of unique in that way to where you want to set it up and know how to use it properly to at least get a kill or knock somebody off the map apart from that not really too much else to talk about here i'm gonna talk about some loadouts and then some good team comps and some good tanks and some good um other characters and other champions to pair with her apart from that i think she, on console she's actually for her overall loadout i think people want her to see her buffed but i think she's at one of those champions to where it's kind of like an atlas Everybody thought Atlas was super underpowered and super shitty when he first got released. But I think Heal is going to be the same way to where it's going to take like a couple months to, for people to start being able to play her well. And I think after that she's going to be insanely good. Once you can play her well, she does. She has enough healing and enough sustain to the point where she can do consistent healing and solo healing by herself. That's no problem for her. Uh, you just have to draft a comp kind of based around her and you have to have a little bit more game awareness. And know how to use her entire kit. She's a. If you're like in a uh, siege game, and you're going against like flanks and like an entire a good team comp, there's a lot going on. I think that's a lot for a lot of players, especially her being a hit scan on console. Um, I can see why a lot of players really don't care for her. Um, but at the same time, if you can put in the work, I think she's going to be insanely good. Um, but I think right now I'd probably put her like in run an S minus until people start getting good with her. I think I'd probably put her top tier healer in the game in like a, probably like a month from now, depending on if she gets buffed or nerfed. I don't think she's gonna get nerfed anytime soon though. I don't think she's to the point where she's absolutely overpowered to the point where she's gonna get a nerf. Um, I think she's perfect as le as she is. The, they, the only thing they really need to change is sacrifice because she only has two viable talents. Her third talent is absolutely useless. As for loadouts, I'm just going to go quickly over um, her skins real quick. She has some great skins. She's probably one of the only characters in the game that actually has a recolor that actually looks good and actually changes her 
to the point where it's actually entirely different from her base skin. Not many other champions in the game actually have that. Um, her Feral, which is her recolor, looks really good. Um, Starfall, I mean, all the, se the, the Season Pass skins are kind of lame, in my opinion, if I'm being honest with you. Um, we have the Golden Skin, which looks absolutely insane. Nice, absolutely insane skin, really cool. Uh, as for loadouts, I'm, I, have, I have a few different loadouts here that I'm going to show you guys. I'm not really going to cover the last two loadouts. This here is actually a sacrifice test. Loadout I actually was trying to use. It does not go well at all. Absolutely worthless talent. I could not make this loadout work for the life of me. I also had these two cards changed out with like some with um, her lower gravity cards. Didn't it, it, I did even worse. Uh, <laughs> sacrifice is so bad. Um, also, I had this this loadout I actually was testing. I actually don't even think I need this loadout anymore um, because I can actually still heal two tanks decently well. I thought she was going to be a little bit low on healing for two tanks, so I kind of made a loadout with more moonlight regeneration. I think that this loadout here is probably going to be the best loadout if you guys want like a solo healer loadout for Isle. Um, this is actually for I for um, her lifelink talent. So if you're going to be running lifelink, which is 99% of the time, if you want to be a solo healing aisle, you're going to have to be running lifelink. We've got Broken Deity. Some of these can be changed out a little bit as well, depending on your playstyle. But for me personally, this is probably the best loadout I've found for so for her so far. Um, after playing her for three days, like, nonstop. Um, increased L Luna's deploy range. Her base deploy range is absolute garbage if you want to be able to put her around corners and have some decent range to the point where you can heal tanks and heal squishies a lot easier with her 300 healing per second you, you throw that up to four um just a little bit of self-sustain i threw on this loadout just because i for me personally i don't want to have to rely on other people to heal me or the or luna to heal me or out of combat healing um this year is probably going to be this card the sanctum of faith is probably a five out of like every every loadout it's probably one of her best cards and one of her most crucial cards you're gonna be running that out of, out of five in most of her cards and her, most of her loadouts um moonlight garden hits with the bow restored eight, eight percent moonlight like i said if you want to be able to heal double tank you're going to be able to run in these three cards this here is just kind of a filler card i threw this on here to give her some more moonlight um, before i had this card different and i think once i threw this card on i was able to heal double tank a lot easier and consistently heal them between these three cards these two cards are more filler but this one here is a little bit better for luna but if you want a tall loadout try this loadout i am completely fine with you guys taking my loadouts and trying it out um next loadout i'm actually going to be showing you guys this here is actually for her um damage reduction talent um which is called i forgot what it's called a goddess blessing uh this year actually can be really overpowered but you're going to have to have like a, a some other type of healer, like a main type healer, like a Furia or like a Genos or like a Grok on your team. Because you're not going to be solo healing everybody. You're going to be pocketing one person like the entire game. That's what this loadout is meant for. And it does work insanely well. You pair this with like a Terminus or like a uh, some type of flank, like a Koga or something like that. And you just follow them around all game. Um, giving them movement speed. 40% movement speed while being healed is absolutely insane if anything this card actually might not get getting nerfed in sometime in the future because that's insane not even grover has that um i have this here as well sanctum of faith and like i said a five on most loadouts um most other stuff is pretty standard but what you're going to be doing is giving 25 percent dr to like one or two specific people on your team and just following them around the entire match and giving them 40 percent movement speed that's legit all it is the entire game. It's kind of like a Torvald, but instead of Torvald giving like a, a shield, you're going to be giving consistent healing for about like two to three seconds at a time. That's pretty much what this loadout is meant for. And DR. So I can see this actually being very powerful on like comp, double healer comps. Like I said, you need to have like a Janos or like a secondary healer for this to work. She's not going to be solo healing and solo carrying a team by heals with this loadout and with that talent, but it can be very good as well. As well with this apart from that um this here is kind of just another loadout i kind of just tested this out i really haven't used it that much if you guys want to test it out go ahead other stuff like i said not really using these loadouts i just kind of have them there just because in case i ever want to use them again 
Apart from that, not really too much else to talk about it, apart from team comps. Now, if you're going to be running team comps, I think Terminus is probably the best tank to run with Isle. You're going to be running Terminus, like, every game um, if you want, like, a solid tank. His ability to, to get rid of the cot by just throwing up his Siphon and uh, getting consistently healed. Also, the movement speed, if you want to run movement speed on your loadout. Uh, Terminus is one of those front lines that greatly benefits from movement speed. You throw like a 10% movement speed buff on his healing um, that he's going to be receiving and he's going to be un pretty much unstoppable. I've had so many games to right now that with Terminus on a comp and I actually ran like um, some healing. I think it was healing and speed buff when I was healing and it was absolutely insane. So I think if you want a decent tank to pair with Io, go ahead and pick Terminus. You can pretty much use all the other tanks as well. Um, a lot of the other tanks, the only tanks I wouldn't use and pair with Io is Ruckus and Torvald because personal shields, late game, they really can't do much and once Cot gets online, they really can't combat Cot. And if you can get rid of Cot, Eel can be really, you can combat Cot really well. Eel can be super good, but if you can't really do anything about Cot, then, or Cauterize, then she's not really going to be that effective. Makoa is also very great. Inara, I say Inara is probably like a top tank you can pair with. Isle, you want to pick a Nara, um, at least for tanks. Other stuff, I'm not really going to cover anything else because I'm not quite sure. It all really depends on the tank. If you're going to be healing, your tank's the main thing you're, you're going to be want to want to go for, right? I think Atlas is also probably like a number three if you want to throw Atlas, um, Atlas onto a team. He's able to stand behind a shield and get a cauterized free heals because his shield's not affected by Wrecker. Uh, he also has self sustain and his loadout, so that's really cool. Apart from that, I'm not really going to talk about too much else. Um, hope you guys did enjoy. I'm going to probably be making a tier list video hopefully here in the next week or so. Once I can find a updated tier list um, where I'm able to make a tier list. But apart from that, hope you guys did enjoy. Um, drop a like down below and subscribe if you guys want more videos like this in the future. And I'll see you guys in a future video. If you have any questions or anything like that as well, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to answer those. See you guys in a future video. Thanks for watching.